or you can request them at the parish office during business hours. We will be more than happy to provide them for you or assist you if you want to donate online. For your, thank you for your generosity and support. Your health and safety are our priority. Please wear face coverings at all times and practice social distancing while, during, while on church premises. We ask if you move the chairs to have your family together, we ask that you put them back after. It is our moral and spiritual duty to protect and look after one another. Please silence your cell phones before the liturgy begins. Please join me in the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Today is day two of St. Francis of Assisi Novena, and the theme is forgiveness. All praise be yours, my Lord, through those who grant pardon for love of you, through those who endure sickness and trials. Happy those who endure in peace. By you, most high, they will be crowned. Reflection. Saint Francis was very attentive to the needs of the world around him, including what his native city required. When the bishop and the mayor of Assisi were once engaged in a bitter dispute, Francis revised his canticle of the creatures to praise those who extend pardon for love of you. Francis wrote these verses, instructed several friars to sing them before the mayor and bishop, and then leave without saying anything else. The mayor and bishop immediately asked one another's forgiveness for this feud and began working to improve the lives of all Assisi citizens. The bishop and mayor may have been like many people who consider forgiveness a sign of weakness and not a sign of strength. When they move toward how God sees forgiveness, a step toward greater honesty in all their relationships, then there was no fear that one side might win at the expense of the other. Forgiveness facilitates a win-win outcome. Forgiveness does not require that people lie to themselves, for example, to deny that certain painful things have happened. But no one's pain is the whole truth about any situation. The more honest people are, the less inflated their egos are, and the less territory they feel they must defend. Francis lived in a very status-conscious society where people frequently felt that their dignity was not being sufficiently respected. It would be nice but untrue to say that such feelings have totally disappeared today. Prayer. Loving God, you know how easy it is for us to refuse to forgive, to nurse a grudge, keeping it forever raw and fresh. Help us to get over the idea that forgiveness is a sign of weakness, and instead to see it for the sign of strength that truly is, as Jesus powerfully demonstrated on the cross. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I welcome all of us to the Mass of the 26th Sunday in the Ordinary Time. As we have gathered to worship God, to thank Him for the many favors we have received from Him. As already announced by our commentator, we are praying for the repose of the souls of Martin Webben, Sally Ramos, and Roman Campus, as well as for the special intention of uh, Rachel and Abigail Johnson. As we offer God our thanksgiving, we bring also the petitions of all of you and all our parishioners and friends joining us online. We ask God to be with us, and to bless us through the course of this Mass and in the days ahead. Let us now take a moment in our hearts, acknowledge our sins, and ask God for pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in, in the, the highest, and on earth, earth peace, peace to, to people, people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, you we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you. you. We, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning, and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attend your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live. 
he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember, Remember your, your mercies, mercies O Lord. Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember, remember your mercies, O Lord. Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember, remember your, your mercies, mercies, O Lord. O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, 
I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet, even when you saw that, you did not let her change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. We are grateful to God for continually making our place of worship here at the parking lot a little more comfortable for all of us through the generous donations of some of our brothers and sisters. We continue to keep them and their families in prayers while we pray for all of you who appreciate what is good. There is one reality everyone here can claim at this moment. There is one reality. And that reality is that we all are. You are, I am. He is. She is. And all of these constitute part of the processes of conjugating the verb to be. I am, you are. He is, she is. We are. Life is a gift. And it is given to each and every one of us for service. Service to God. Service to nature, to ourselves. Service to other human beings. The gospel of today, taken from Matthew chapter 21, beginning from verse 28 to 32, provided a narrative of this ministry of service. And it highlighted the response of two individuals to the call of service. As we heard, a father came to two of his children and told the first, go walk in my farm. And the first said, he will not. But thought afterwards about it and said, maybe I should go. And he went. And he came to the second and said the same thing. Go and walk in my farm. And the second son said, I will, daddy. And did not go. Last Sunday, we had the story of a landowner who got out to hire laborers to work in his farm. And how this landowner had chosen to be generous to everyone he had hired. That parable we had last Sunday was figuratively representative. And he taught us that God is generous and that he rewards commitment and hard work. Consistent with his expectations from us in the first reading of today, taken from Ezekiel chapter 18, beginning from verse 25 to 28. 
God reminded us that what he wants is this commitment. And it's a commitment not for a day or two, but all through our lives. God wants co our commitment to him, to things that pertain to him, and to the well-being of one another. Not for one day, not for two days, but all through our lives. We may have failed him a few times, or multiple times. And as we are gathered to celebrate, we recognize that he is kind and merciful. Psalm 25, verse 6, as we prayed in the psalm of today. And we have come to ask him to have pity on us. But even as we make this prayer, God continues to take us as his sheep. A sheep that he wants to listen to his voice and to follow according to his directives. So, but we are all together in the search to connect to lasting happiness. And we have a duty to keep encouraging one another in order to accomplish this goal for ourselves. In the second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning from verse 1 to 11, St. Paul had encouraged the Philippians as he is talking to us today. He says, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, he says, help to complete my joy, being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking about one good goal, the goal and the happiness of each and every one of us. So, it is the same bidding as it was for the Philippians to us today. If there is any encouragement in Christ, St. Paul is, sell, is, sell, is telling us, complete the joy of each and every one of us. Complete that joy by being of the same mind, of the same spirit, with the same love. So as we worship God on this 26th Sunday, my dear friends, irrespective of where we are coming, or whatever reasons we had, for doing what we could have done in our past that is not okay. Irrespective of where you are coming. God is telling you today, drawing your attention to commit to what is true. To what is right and to what is just. And no time is late to return to a good life. So to, he, today he reminds us to choose to do this. To choose to commit to a good life and not for a day or two, but permanently. And he is expecting us not to keep procrastinating. Don't keep putting it off. I will commit to a good life tomorrow. I will commit next month. I will commit to a good life after the general elections. No. Don't put it out. Don't put it off until after the general elections. Don't put it off to tomorrow. Don't keep procrastinating. Today is a good day. And so what he wants you to do is right now, as you listen to his word, to just do it. Turn to him. Surrender yourself. Surrender your intentions. Commit to whatever is right, what is true, and what is good. And follow up with your commitment through just actions so that the goal of happiness which you have set for yourself you may accomplish give glory to god improve yourself and your living conditions as well as improve also the living conditions and comfort of everyone else around you
I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. True sorrow for sin requires a change of heart and attitude. Our prayers today include our will to live out what we believe. For the shepherds of the church, that their faith-filled teaching and preaching will lead all God's people into the one shipfold of grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For leaders who will speak and act for the sake of those who have no voice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live in opposition to one another in our parish and community, that amid our conflicts and misunderstanding, make us one in mind and heart, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound, the sick, Miguel Angel Rodriguez, Ron Bailey, Dennis Easterling, Rosalinda Cisneros, Genaro Pimentel, Beatrice San Agustin, Crystal Canales, Carl Reiki, Maria Torres, and for their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, Shirley Wood, Maria Aguilar, Angel Magdalano, Fortaleza, Liz Onofre, may they rest forever in the eternal peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our pray. prayer. For the repose of the souls of Martin Wibben, Sally Ramos, and Rom Roman Campas, and for the special intention of Rachel and Abigail Johnson, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our pray. prayer. For those intentions we carry in the quiet of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, let the peace of heaven that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The ushers will be coming around to bring the offering, the box of offering. Kindly put whatever offering you have in those boxes. And uh, remember, you can also mail your donation to the parish office. Or you use the online platform to do the online giving. Thank you for your donations.
Acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, host, heaven and earth are full of your Lord. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, John and Ramon, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy. 
Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May we offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of, of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say your word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. We invite our friends who are joining us online to make their spiritual communion at this time. By this we came to know the love of God. 
that Christ laid down his life for us, so we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we now receive Jesus in the Eucharist, let us go in his peace and love. Thanks be to God. Final reminder, please remember to return the seats if you move them together to sit as family. And don't forget we are still selling the ticket for the raffle draw uh, uh, in respect of the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Thank you for coming and may God grant us a happy week ahead. Eucharistic ministers, please. Taste and see. Set free.